Hey everybody, how's it going? Um, this is Let's Make a Mech, No Van Helbring Edition, Part 6, I believe. And they're done. And they got a special guest with them too, as you can see here. So, real quick, this is the Horned Owl. This is a light mech, a clan light mech. So I painted up in the clan color schemes for the Smoke Jaguar. Um, I forgot I had this guy, and I found him while painting up these guys, and I paint up along with them, get them out of the limelight until now. Uh, I'm glad I found him because I forgot I bought him all those years ago. And um, it's a shame I forgot, really, because he is my favorite clan second line mech, without a doubt. Now, what is a clan second line mech? Well, the clans, as some of you will probably know if you follow Biotech a bit, have, uh, well, were famous for the Omni mech design, and the industry copied that eventually where they pretty much have weapon pods they put onto one chassis. So one chassis can theoretically be five different mechs, you know, due to weapon swap outs. It makes it very versatile, it makes one chassis be able to take on almost any type of role. Um, you know, fire support, close in support, defensive, offensive, stuff like that. And it really does uh, improve the capabilities of the mech design. Um, you know, if you damage one weapon pod loadout, you can replace it with a different pod loadout until that one was repaired, so on and so forth. That's what the clan's known for. But the clan also had mechs that were not Omnimechs. And the Horned Owl, also known as the Peregrine by the Endosphere, is not an Omnimech. So it's considered what's called a second line mech. And um, it's still a clan mech with the clan technology, so it's still superior, if you want to think about it that way, than a Endosphere mech of similar weight. But, um,. It's just not an Omni mech. Its weapons are like built in, there's no pods. It's basically think Inner Sphere and all the limitations Inner Sphere non Omni non Inner Sphere Omni mechs have, like you know, the Commando, um, the Atlas, stuff like that. Um, but as a, in clan form, and this is a light mech. Uh, it has jump jets, I believe. It has a good targeting system in terms of fluff, it's very accurate. And it has like a large pulse laser, I think two mediums, I forget, maybe it's two smalls, I don't remember offhand, but that's its weapons loadout, an energy based configuration. There are some variants, but it's not like Omnimex, there aren't alternate configurations, they are just strictly variants. So that's the Horned Owl, also known as the Peregrine, like I said. And I love the look, I mean, that's the whole reason, that and I like his weapons loadout. But I think it looks great. So. I figured I'd show you guys him as a little treat, a little surprise at the end of this video series. And just like the 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 Hellbringer and the Nova, it was a restoration type of project in terms of it was already painted, I stripped the paint off, repainted it, and all that. The thing about the Horned Owl, and I don't A, know if they still make the Horned Owl, I think they do, and B, that was from like around 1997. I don't know if the current cast are still in one piece, but this guy was one piece of pewter. Nothing assembled. No assembly required. So, uh, with that being said, what did we do, what did I do, for um, these guys to bring them up to being finished? Well, we finished the bases, um, repainted beach shell brown on the base, dry brush it with bleach bone and skull white, then I edged it in orc hide shade. And then I stopped with the bases. You'll see the static grass on the base, but I did not put that on until the very end. After that, I washed the models in Bedad Black. Now, with any type of wash, you can't just dab it on and let it sit there. It'll pool up sometimes and stain the model. And unless that's the look you're going for. If that's the look you're going for, for a real aged, grimy look, that's fine. But with these mechs, that's not what I was going for. So I, you know, I painted it on like paint pretty much and made sure it didn't blotch up anywhere. Let that fully dry. Then I matte varnish these guys. After doing that, and letting that fully dry, for like at least 8 hours, I did static grass on the models. Oh, on the bases. And the models are done. And as you can see, I hope, the models pop. Even from looking at it here without showing you real close up, the models just pop because of the of that black wash. Here's the Hellbringer Prime. You can see like the armored joints on the arms uh, pop out more because of the wash guide into the little crevices there, the armor plating on the legs, on the torso, it just, everything pops. It makes the uh, model just look that much better, in my opinion. It also tones down the color, the fortress gray, it tones it down a little bit, um, as well as everything else kind of ties the model together. 
So that's the Hellbringer Prime. Here's the Nova Prime. You can see also on the Nova, it just ties it together and makes the armor plates pop out on its legs there that you wouldn't kind of really see before that. Or you would if you had to like look a little harder. Just, when, I can't really explain pop very well in terms of just your eye is catches more detail, I guess, on the model. Even the horned owl, which you've never seen, and I use him as a good example, the, you know, the little shading here would have been bland and dull of just fortress gray up here as well and this little armor plating line where the armor plates for the legs meet you wouldn't really see it it'd be bland it would just be um same thing with little jump jet parts on his legs it would still be there it wasn't painted over with with a thick amount of paint it's just that without having that wash to get in there or some other type of way of getting in there you know if you micro penned it or you painted it in there by hand um you wouldn't really see it wouldn't stand out so the Badab Black wash is a very easy way to add that extra depth to your models. I like it. I stand by it. I think it makes them look good. So those are the three mechs. The Hellbringer Prime, which is a heavy mech. The Nova Prime, which is a medium mech. And the Horned Owl, which is a second line clan light mech. And that's pretty much it. I'm not sure what I'm going to paint up my next mech. I have that Warhawk I have to paint, but i got to buy a uh, hex bases for it. The, or one hex base for it, but they come in a pack of four, I think. Because, um, for some reason, that's the only, my only, you know, complaint is that it looks like the current uh, release of mechs don't come with bases. These guys did. They were attached to them, actually, the legs were fully attached. And in the case of the Horned Owl being one piece, it was one piece with its base. But the new guys, as that, guy, as that thing falls, um, don't seem to come with bases. My only complaint. And there's still Peter, which is whatever. But that's pretty much it. So hope you've enjoyed. Uh, we saw these guys go from before any work was done, showing you their like their their state, then stripping the paint off, and then painting them up to where they are now. And I think they look a lot better now than they did then. So hope you've enjoyed, and until next time, take it easy.